Hey guys, good morning. Hope you're doing well. I uh, got some current events for you guys on this uh, rainy Monday morning. So let's get at it. A few things that accumulated from the uh, past week. Um, actually, some sports current events to start out with. Uh, first, uh, really interesting to me was uh, Gronkowski of the Patriots. He retired a couple years ago. But uh, he said he'd be willing to come out of retirement and play in Tampa Bay with uh, with Tom Brady. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure um, how that happened. Um, he said it was uh, as part of a trade. Um, so I thought since he was retired, I mean, you know, how does that work? But maybe he still had some sort of uh, contra contractual uh, obligation with the Patriots. Maybe somebody can uh, let me know about that. But, um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so a lot of Patriots fans, I guess, are going to become Buccaneers fans, or, or, or maybe not. We'll see. Um, uh, another one that I just kind of stumbled across was, uh, I don't know if you guys remember John Runyon from, uh, uh, from the Eagles. Um, I think he was a... A center or something. I forget what he, his position was, but anyway, he was a offensive line somewhere. And uh, but his son was just drafted by the Packers. Uh, th this story actually kind of highlights how he um, accidentally declined the team's call when uh, during draft day uh, when he was on the phone with his agent or something like that. But uh, but the Packers called back and um, yeah, it took him in the sixth round. So anyway, he will be. Uh, a, uh, a Packer this year. Fog as well. Oh, uh, this one was interesting On April to me. 15, 2019, firefighters charged into this the is a, a look inside the restoration of Notre Dame Cathedral. Cathedral to so, blazing fire. basically, it's talking they about how precautions while spraying down the 850 year old Parisian monument, like using lower water pressure and avoiding stained glass vulnerable to shattering. They also followed a plan to save priceless relics and works of art. In the days following, firefighters gave way to a new team on the front line, restoration scientists from the Laboratory for Historical Monuments. Yeah, and then this is a four-minute video, but it just kind of goes through all the ways that, um, uh, you know, the fire obviously damaged a lot of things. Um, one was the, the limestone inside. Uh, some of it can be weakened by being heated up to a certain temperature. And obviously the uh, the lead roof, which I did not know, it was lead, but uh, the lead roof melted uh, and got into lots of nooks and crannies. Um, and uh, a lot of scientists, of course, just trying to uh, figure out where the limestone came from, if they can source the, uh, the same quarries. Uh, also looking at some of the wood um, and seeing, you know, how that was all put together. So anyway, just a lot of different forensic teams going in there and uh, trying to figure it out. So I'll uh, leave the link in the description. It's interesting. Kim Jong-un, of course, have been in the news a lot. Um, this was an interesting video. I won't watch it here. But uh, this Fox News interview, um, interviewing some some guy, an uh, expert on North Korea, he basically saying that um, there are two potential successors to uh, Kim Jong Un if he were to pass away. Uh, first is is his sister, and that's the one I've seen. Um, but uh, the second is a a son of uh, of Kim Il Sung who's still alive um, and living in uh, or, or was living in. Eastern Europe, I guess, I think he's back in North Korea now, but uh, anyway, they're just kind of saying that there are uh, two people who could potentially claim the throne there, um, and just some of the politics, uh, but <laughs> the expert did say, uh, it probably doesn't matter, e either person is, is probably not a great leader for, for North Korea, and easing tensions, and um, giving the North Koreans a better life, and easing tensions with with uh, other countries, including the U.S. So, we'll see how that goes. Of course, uh, Kim Jong-un had uh, cardiac surgery and hasn't been seen in uh, a couple of weeks. So, we'll see. 
Governor Wolf unveil, unveils a three-phase plan to... Uh, uh, where'd the map go? Well, there used to be. Okay, so there's no map anymore. Oh, here's a map. Um, so this kind of split into a few regions here. And uh, everyone's either like, well, there's some cities that are in red. Um, but uh, anyway, which means that there's like, you know, here we go. Life sustaining businesses only. Um, congregate care and prison restrictions in place, schools, and most child care facilities closed. Um, the different social restrictions. Um, but most places here are in yellow, um, which means a lot of the same thing. Um, and then they're going to hope to get to green eventually, which will open up some of these, uh, some of these counties. But, uh, yeah, so it's a plan, I guess. Uh, I was reading that more states are out there trying to lift restrictions here and there as, as much as they can. Um, so I hope that, uh, hope that they can because people's lives need to get back to normal. Hopefully someday soon. Uh, this one was sent to and sent it by Tim. Thanks, Tim. Long lost U.S. military satellite found by amateur radio operator. So apparently there's, uh, yeah, 2,000 active satellites orbiting Earth, some of which don't really serve a function anymore, but they're still in orbit and they haven't fallen to Earth and they uh, still have enough power to generate some sort of signal. Um, but this guy um, said he found one launched in... Da -da -da -da. New Zombie Sat, uh, 1967. So anyway, the uh, apparently NASA or whoever's in charge of that had lost track of it. But uh, he went digging around and looking in some research papers, looking for what frequency the uh, signal was was active at, and uh, he was able to to find it. Uh, I think he said it was on a on a polar orbit, but the um, I think it's Canadian, British Columbia. I feel like I'm saw somewhere at the British Columbia. So, yeah, he said that uh, he was on lockdown, had some extra time in his hands, so he, he was doing this. So, sounds like an interesting hobby. And last but not least here, Dutch students complete Atlantic crossing forced by virus. So, this, uh, this school, this Dutch school was um, on some sort of uh, boat going around different um, Caribbean islands. And uh, they were supposed to uh, land in, I think they made it, started in Cuba, come back to Cuba, and then fly home. Um, but during that during their time at sea, um, coronavirus restrictions, and they weren't allowed to come back. They were allowed to, I guess, take on supplies. Uh, and then they sailed, I think, like 1,700 miles over to... Uh, uh, Oh wait, never mind. Seventeen hundred is a lie. Seven thousand kilometers, over four thousand miles. Uh, so, the northern Dutch port of Harlingen. Netherlands. So, a little bit far away from from Cuba. Yep. <laughs> So, yep, Cuba's here. Harlequin's there. Well, they they passed up a lot of ports, and uh, yeah, there they go. So good for them. That'll be definitely a uh, a time to remember. So, all right, guys, that's it for me for current events today. Hope you're having a good day, and I'll uh, see you around.